we talked about three testing principles we checked our understanding now let's move to the fourth testing principle and the fourth testing principle says that defects in software tend to occur in clusters they don't occur uniformly or in other words if you have a software and you have tested it software has five modules and after having tested you found 500 defects in this software which contained five modules so defects tend not to occur in uniform meaning because there are five modules that there are 500 defects so each module has 100 defects that is a very rare situation it never happens what happens in contrary is the defects tend to occur in clusters in few modules most of the defects will occur and rest of the modules small number of defects occur or this whole clustering also tends to follow a rule and that rule is called Pareto rule Pareto rule tells that 80 or it's also called 80 20 rule so in 80 20 rule in a software testing point of view 80 percent of defects tend to occur in 20 percent of the modules and rest of the 20 percent defects tend to occur in 80 percent of the modules that is how it happens and that is a very commonly occurring phenomena in many aspects of life in fact Pareto rule is not a rule hypothesized for software testing Pareto is a Latin sociologist he tried to study how wealth is distributed in Italy long back uh, amongst its population and he found that 80 percent of the wealth in Italy was with 20 percent of the population and rest of the 20 percent of wealth was distributed amongst 80 percent of population and then he found it very interesting and did his studies in rest of the countries in Europe and he found the same pattern to happen and then he created a rule called 80 20 rule and in software and with respect to software quality whenever we do testing and whenever we plot a graph a histogram by defect distribution by a subsystem so in our diagram here we have five modules the total number of defects found are 500 but 80 percent of the defects tend to happen in module one and module two and rest of the three modules are having the rest of the 20 percent defects so this we consider it as our, our fourth testing principle but how do we use in our day-to-day -day lives as professional testers so to read this principle little differently we can think like this the more defects you find the more defects there are so the same defect cluster principle can be kind of re uh, written as the more defects you find the more defects there are let's say you are in charge of testing a software which came to release two of the software you are doing a system test and that has five modules so as a good tester what you must do you must go to the release one system testing and look at the data and plot a uh, histogram like the one you are seeing on the screen defect distribution by subsystem and you find that 80 percent of defects are occurring in only 20 percent of modules now as a tester where will you put more effort will you test the module 1 and module 2 here or you will test module 3 to 4 to 5 because you found less defects previously so let me put more effort on these three modules and find more defects is it going to be your logic or already in the previous release these first two modules were buggy so let me put more effort because there may be more bugs there so which one will you take so if you understand this principle clearly you will put more effort on module 1 and module 2 because why this 80 percent of defects are occurring in these two modules what may be the reason in fact Pareto principle can be kind of expanded and we can think about complexity of the software if there is a software with 10 modules 80 percent of the complexity will be realized in 20 percent of the software whereas rest of the complexity is handled in 
80%. Because of the complexity, people may make more mistakes. Because of that, more defects there, there are in that. So, if you understand this principle, we'll go and test or put more effort, 80% of your effort, on the areas where 80% of defects have occurred previously. So, that is why we are telling the more defects you find, the more defects there are. So, keep it in your minds, internalize in your systems. Defects in software tend to occur in clusters. They don't occur uniformly. So, after having understood this principle, you have to determine and decide where you will put most of your effort. That's why this is a very important testing principle. So, now let's move to the next principle. And the next principle tells that the fifth testing principle talks about pesticide paradox. Again, let us understand the first, the words pesticide paradox. All of us know what is a pesticide. We use pesticides on crops to kill insects so that crops are protected. So why we apply pesticides on a crop to kill the insects? What is the paradox here? Let's say you are applying a pesticide and instead of getting those, those insects getting killed, they are getting multiplied. Then a paradox situation is happening. You are applying pesticide to kill the insects. But what is happening? The opposite is happening. So why it happens? We know. You go and ask any farmer. They will tell you. Whenever a farmer applies same pesticide repeatedly again and again and again on the same crop, the effectiveness of the pesticide will reduce. So instead of killing or reducing those pests, the insects will start drinking and tell that, okay, come on, give me more. It is like an energy drink for me. That happens. Every farmer knows it. So now, how do we take this principle into our testing area? So in testing, what happens? Whenever you are having a software that evolves year after year, it is a big software. Simultaneously, the tests that we created for this software also will evolve. They will become bigger and bigger and bigger. And we call these assets, the test case assets, we call them as actually test suites. So from pesticide paradox, what we, as the software is changing, we apply these test suites to find defects in the software. But like a pesticide will lose its effect if you repeatedly apply the same pesticide against crop again and again, like that, your regression test suites or test suites, if you apply again and again and again on the software without modifying them, without changing them, without adding extra test cases, then like your pesticide loses its effect to kill bugs, testing area also it can happen same way. If the test suites are not modified periodically, not upgraded periodically, like a pesticide loses its effect to kill bugs, your test suites can lose effectiveness to find bugs. So that is what the principle, pesticide paradox tells us. So how do we apply in our day-to-day -day lives as professional testers? Let's say you are in charge of regression testing of a large-scale software. So you have to think like a farmer. You have to keep on looking at the changes that are happening in your software and correspondingly upgrade your test suites. What do you mean by upgrading? You have to remove some unnecessary tests. You have to change some existing tests to correspond with the software changes. You have to add new tests to correspond it with the changes that are happening with the software. If you don't do that, you may face the problem of pesticide paradox. That's why this principle is also very, very important for a professional tester. So now, let us check our understanding with all the principles so far we have learned. So, on your screen, you have a set of five questions and you have to fill in the blanks with the five terms that are there 
below the screen. Okay. So there are five words. There is a word called cluster, defects, early, exhaustive, effective. You fill with the right word, with the right blank. So let us read the first one. Testing shows the presence of dash, not their absence. So what is the answer? Yes, you are right. Testing shows the presence of defects, not their absence. Second one, dash testing is not possible. So what is the right word? Exhaustive testing is not possible. You are right. And the third blank is testing activities <coughs> should start as dash as possible. Yes, you are right as early as possible. Testing activities should start as early as possible. Early testing is valuable. That is our principle. <coughs> the fourth one is defects tend to dash together in software. What is the word? Cluster. You are right. And the fifth blank is if the same tests are done over and over again, they stop being dash anyway. The last option that is effective. So with this, I hope you understood five of our seven testing principles. And thank you very much for your attention. Learn and have fun. Thank you.